boxing is a brute sport. I mean, we, we're crazy to do it. If you look back years ago, they would put maybe one or two men in a ring with a line. And people would scream and holler, ba 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 ba. But we got more civilized. Now we just put the two guys in the ring and we make them fight. And we holler and scream. So, you know, we came a long way in boxing. James J. Braddock. They call me the Cinderella Man. It was not a boxing match. Not a civilized fistic encounter. Two wild men were tossed into the same ring each with an intent to murder the other or be murdered in his failure. And 85,000 persons imbibing in the spirit of madness arose to their feet. And 85,000 voices howled and shrieked in a delirium that made a din which rivaled a thousand Niagara's. case is much stranger than fiction. Double up on that left, Jimmy. Yeah, I always liked to fight. Ever, ever since I was a little kid. That's a boy. Nice. nice I like kid. hitting things. And, you know, getting hit ain't, ain't so bad. Get in there, Jimmy. Go on. That's right. Don't let him get under you like that. If he's going to come under, Jimmy, you bring to the body, Jimmy. Jimmy and I met back in, uh, in Hoboken. I had this fighter that I was, I was uh, selling my stake in him. And so I brought him to this gym to work out. And the guys that I was selling to wanted to see him in the ring. So I look around, and I see this kid jump and roll. This little guy comes up to me and offers me five bucks. Um, to go, uh, you know, a couple rounds with one of his fighters. You're letting him have the whole ring, cut off one side of it. Jimmy proceeds to get in the ring and lick my guy so soundly that I got to knock $1,500 off the asking price. Stay planted and give it to him. At the end of it, you know, he comes up to me, he asks me my name. And I say, who's your manager? And he says, I ain't got no manager. And I says, what do you do now? Name's Joe Gould. I'd only been, I don't even know, not, not a lot of fights. And my bro was the only one in my corner I ever. You gotta mix it up, huh? We shook on it. And, um, I don't know, we've been together ever since. Well, you know, managers of a different breed. They'll take a palooka up the street, throw him in a ring with somebody, you know, and they'll, they'll get as much as they can, as fast as they can with him, and then throw him out. But the relationship between Joe and Jim wasn't like that at all, okay? Hang on. That's right. For years, they never had a contract. That's right. You're strong. The only contract he ever had was a handshake. Joe said we was going to fight as much as we could. That first year, I fought 15 times, and I never lost one of them. And Joe would always say, you get in the ring, and you stay in the ring. We were going to fight every single week if we had to. Just build up a record, 
and look for a shot at the title. Simple. He's up against Pete Lazzo. Lazzo thinks that he's just some big pushover, so he gets lazy, fourth round, bam! Jimmy Ham is the right. You could actually see the side of Lazzo's face cave in. He busted jaw four places. The doctor said it took 12 foot of wire just to hold the bones together. Lazzo couldn't open his mouth for months, which in this case probably ain't a bad thing. That's Jimmy Raddick's right hand. Jim was best friends with my brother, Howard. Jim would come over. I was there. I don't know, she, she was just always so nice to me. He was very shy, very quiet. She always asked me, am I hurt? Or like, uh, am I all right? Never did I win or lose or anything. Oh, I like that. Summer of 29. Braddock finally had a shot at a title. Tommy Loughran, Philadelphia Phantom. He was the light heavyweight champion of the world. He could duck and dance, faint and circle around anybody in the ring. When Braddock was climbing through the ropes at Yankee Stadium, he actually thought he was gonna knock Lochran out. <laughs> Imagine that. I've gone to one of Jim's fights. It was just before we got married. He talked me into going. Said I'd bring him luck. The fight was going on, and a fan from ringside kept yelling up to Braddock, hit him with your right hand, hit him with your right hand. Hit him with your right. Hit him with your right. Hit him with your right. And we got to a point where I just, I, I looked down at him and I says, look, buddy. Why don't you get up here and hit him with your right? They started punching each other. said Braddock could still do okay in the sport if he could just learn how to box. Beat me sound. Judges ruled it 13 rounds to two. It wasn't even that close. After the Lockwood fight, he lost his confidence. And when a fighter loses his confidence, it's the worst thing that could happen. You know, you, you lose that edge. He just wasn't the same after that fight. I remember four rounds, we used to get $10. Then if they take out for your bandages and your tapes, you wind up with about $5.
I fought every two weeks. Sometimes, uh, if I had an easy fight, my manager would put me in the next week. You fought with broken hands, broken noses. Hey, that's busted. In the heat of the battle, sometimes it don't even hurt. When we took on Lawgren, Jimmy, he'd already won 32 fights. He'd only been beat three times. I mean, we were, we were ready for our shot at the title. And Jimmy's got that big right hand. Thought we could catch him. I don't know. I mean, maybe I, I pushed Jimmy along too quick. After locker and he just wasn't the same. He almost stopped fighting. We managed to save up twenty thousand dollars from all of his fights. That was it. Jim was ready to give up fighting, and I was all for it. I'd never dreamed of so much money. $20,000. You made some money in the fight game, but uh, it didn't, uh, you didn't hold on to it for too long. He was, he was suggestible. One of Jim's friends had an idea, an investment. He buys a restaurant, okay? But that goes belly under because he's floating tabs for all his friends. Then he gets talked into buying a taxi company. Okay? He loses 30 grand there. Then the depression hit. That pretty much wiped out everybody. When the stock market crashed, Braddock lost every cent of savings he had. We lost everything. Everything. And so Jim kept fighting. Now let's finish with the right. Finish with a strong right this time. Braddock had some Achilles heel, it was the right hand. He had shattered it, but he kept on fighting. You think anyone cares how much it hurts? If people find out that I'm damaged goods, that's it. I gotta keep fighting, I got no choice. He broke it against uh, Joe Monte's head, but he doesn't tell nobody. You know, we're fighting two, three times a month, and uh, he's throwing to right less and less. They put me in with his hand doctor. He tells me that they gotta reset it. And I have to break it again. Now, this is gonna cost us $1,000. You all right? I ain't got $1,000. Jimmy, sure ain't got $1,000. So we came up with a plan. I, I said to this doctor, well, what if I was to break in a fight? Next fight, first round. Boom. That's what we did. Broke it, reset it, back in business. I mean, it still hurts, but it... <laughs> it's a lot better than it was. I got three children. My oldest is Jay. And then, um, I got Howard. I got my, uh, my little girl, <laughs> Rosemarie. People saying I'm 
washed up. I just don't want the kids, I don't want May hearing that stuff. He's, uh, he's got mostly critics. He's got, uh, they say he's, uh, slow, he's flat-footed, he's got no left hand. Where's his left? The impression is stronger than ever that James J. would make a great chess player. He has all the necessary speed for that game. Jim Braddock just plods around the ring. It's as if his brain is moving about the same speed as his feet. Jim is through, that he's just an old man. Well, they don't know my husband. Before they go to sleep, the children always say their prayers. God protect daddy. Don't let that man knock him down. May the Lord be with Daddy. Amen. Maybe everyone was right. What they were saying about me, you know. Maybe I should retire. I'd give her it all I had. It just wasn't good enough. During the depression years, it seems like you're always hungry. We went to bed hungry. We woke up hungry. You had to be fast, especially at the dinner table. And that's where I learned to jab good. I used to grab for that roll or something. You had nothing to eat in the morning. All we drank was tea and hard bread. Heat. Heat was so important. Just to be warm, my God. I... Uh, well, after a few years, you know, we, we, we were not welfare. I'll be honest with you, we were not welfare. Till I got a little bit bigger and I started to work. When the rent was due, we had to move. <laughs> it seems like we were always moving. We moved all over Hoboken. My father died when I was very young, nine years old. Ten years old, I was selling papers on the street. My mom. <laughs> Rough years, rough years. Here's a guy with a wife and three kids. The only thing he's ever known in life is hammering another guy's face. He stumbled around, won a few fights, lost a whole lot more. Promoters didn't even want to book him. So he did the only thing he could. He went out and got a job on the docks. I don't really know why things turned how they did. Students, too. 
The sister said James was no longer welcome in school. Oh well, it's not the end of the world. He's 14, almost a grown man. He'll do fine. I couldn't get fights, I couldn't get work. Not steady. I'll go down to the docks every single morning, and if I was lucky, I'd, I'd get picked. Do you know how much they actually pay you down there? Five dollars. Five dollars. I used to make 20000 in one night, and they pay me $5. I know he hates it. He doesn't have to tell me. I can see it. When Jimmy started working on the docks, uh, I didn't see him that much anymore. I mean, we, we talk once in a while, but I mean, every time I saw him, it was the same thing. I'm sorry I can't get you to fight, kid. Nobody wants you. If you want to get work, you got to go to Jersey City, Hoboken, or Weehawken. So you're going to walk a lot. There's one day, I probably walked 15 miles. There just wasn't any work. Jim was gone. He left to go down to look for work. Men came and turned off the gas and lights. We hadn't paid our bills in over three months. No lights, no gas. Well, what am I supposed to do, huh? The next morning, Jim applied for government relief. bucks a month. I swear to God, one day, I'm gonna pay you all that back. Every stinking penny of it. I'm not a charity case. We had to send our two boys away. Jay went to stay with Jim's parents, and Howard went to my mom's. We couldn't afford to feed them. You know what a tomato can is? Tomato cans are washed up fighting. They throw them into the ring with somebody else to make them look good. Then they throw them out. That's what Braddock was, a tomato can. Nobody wanted to touch him in the boxing business, except Gould. I was down at the garden every day looking for a fight. And I was begging for a fight. Gould got him a fight at the garden up against a young strapping guy from Georgia, John Corn Griffin. Everybody's talking about him like he's Jack Dempsey or something. And Jimmy is supposed to be the tomato can. Corn Griffin's coming to town. He wants to make a splash in New York. Hey, uh, let's give him Braddock. Braddock had a name a couple of years ago. They give us this spot two days away. Two days. We gotta be crazy to take that kind of fight. I mean, Jimmy, he ain't fought in months. He's been working at the docks. But how are we going to say no? I 
I just need made to believe me. Now I'm gonna get us out of this. Basically a washed up guy working on the docks. He couldn't feed his wife and kids. So all of a sudden Gould shows up and, hey, I got your fight. Two days. Give him two days notice to fight this kid, Corn Griffin. I'm never going to get a chance like this again. I, I know that. I don't care what anyone says. I'm, I'm just going to do my best. And they give us this fight and two days away? Yeah, it's not much time. Yeah, he's been working at the docks. Yeah, he ain't fought in months, but... If I don't believe in him, who's gonna, right? Braddock finally found a reason for fighting other than the fight itself. He was fighting to save the lives of his wife and kids. What happens? Braddock knocks him out in the third round. Braddock is back in business. deserve this shot at bear. We earned it. You know, they put three guys in our way. Each one of them was supposed to send us home. We're still here. Braddock was in the best shape of his life. He had just spent the past two years on the docks uh, slinging railroad ties. The only good thing I got from the docks, these. When he started working on the docks, he had a broken hand. He couldn't even use his right hand. He had to carry everything with his left hand. But the depression was the best thing that ever happened to him. Saved his boxing career. Max Bear has more nicknames than sense. Madcap Maxi, the Fistic Harlequin, the Clouding Clown, the Larraping Lothario of Pugilism, the Magnificent Screwball. I got a million dollar body with a 10 cent brain. But I'm going to tell you something that's a bar. It's no secret that Max Bear is a ladies' man. And why not? He's young, rich, famous, handsome, and he likes to wine and dine all night long. Nobody ever told Maxie the oldest rule in the fight game. You can sweat out beer. You can sweat out whiskey. You can't sweat out women. I'm going to knock Braddock out. I'm going to punch him full of hope. I love being the heavyweight champ. If Braddock wants to take my title, he's going to have to kill me. We can do this like in the old days. The last man standing is the man who wins. You know, he's got another nickname. Killer. The killer. You don't say it to his face, but... Kill the man in the ring. picture.
it's funny how a, a, a big, slow-moving, slow-thinking guy like Jim would last this long. But, I mean, trust me, he's better than ever. It's because he's cute. Sure, he gets hit, but not hard. In 10 years, no one's ever really nailed him. And don't try telling me that Max Bear is going to be the one to do it. Max Bear ain't going to be in there with some big goop waiting to get hit. He's going to be in there with a guy that's cute. Brad is going to win. Don't listen to these experts. Braddock's gonna win. I can feel it. It's in the air. Braddock's gonna win. Come on, get ahead with a right. Give him another right. Mr. That's... Joe Gould has been going around in a state of self-hypnosis, common in all managers of a contender before a championship fight, saying over and over, Braddock's gonna win. Is that what you want? Braddock's gonna win. Come on, win. keep hitting. Keep going. Good, Braddock's good, gonna good, win. Good, good, good. Stronger. There is a doctor in the house. We think he ought to do something for Mr. Gould before paying any attention to the other patients. A neat sedative seems in order. We're gonna win this fight. You gotta believe it, and I gotta believe it, and then they'll all believe it. He starts and ends every sentence with Braddock is gonna win, Braddock is gonna win. Sometimes that's the entire sentence. Braddock is gonna win. James J. Braddock is gonna win the championship of the world. We're gonna win. James J. Braddock has been laboring away to get in shape for his championship fling at Max Bear. He is taking himself seriously, even if only a handful of boxing fans are doing the same. The betting makes Bear a five to one favorite. It is even money that Braddock does not even come out for the 10th round. People ask me, they say, how does it feel to kill a man with your bare hands? It doesn't feel good. I didn't get into the game to kill people. Max Bear, they called him the killer because he killed a man once in the ring. Frankie Campbell, a heavyweight like Bear from California. Max had him up against the ropes, pounding away with that big right of his. Campbell goes down, unconscious. He died 13 hours after they stopped the fight. The doctor said that Campbell's brain was just one big bruise. They arrested Max Bear, charged him with manslaughter. Papers called him a butcher and a murderer. <laughs> a few months later, people came to their senses and they dropped all the charges and gave him back his license to box. After all, he was only doing what he was trained to do. I mean, how, how do you kill somebody? And it won't bother you. It stayed with him. I don't think he ever got over that. Did he get back his will as a fighter, his killer instinct? Well, that's another matter. Jim, hey, Jim, 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 I'm going to outbox him. Right, Jim, you really Jim. seem to hit the skids there in your career at one point. How do you handle the pressure? It's a sentimental favor. What do you have to say to America? A lot of people are pulling for me. You know, because of everything I've been through. And I don't, I don't want to let them down. Jim, you were a contender, then you dropped out of sight. How are you feeling, Jim? Are you in good shape? I can tell you that nothing is as certain as the outcome of this fight. If there ever was a sure thing, this is it. Are you out training every day? What did working on the docks do for you? Max Bear will beat James Braddock. Hey, Jim, hey, Jim, okay. Jim, how come we never see your wife in the fights? I guess there aren't many that give my husband much of a chance. Other than us Braddocks. But those people don't know Jim. Joe keeps saying, Braddock's gonna win, you know, Braddock's gonna win, Braddock's gonna win. I just hope he's, he's right.
Max Baer, heavyweight champion of the world, defends his title tonight against James J. Braddock of New Jersey. The Cinderella Man of Fistiana. Around town, the query is, has Braddock any chance? Now, Jersey James is just a journeyman pugilist compared to the hard-hitting Harlequin of Hollywood. By any system of accounting, Bear figures to win. A little over a year ago, Braddock was all washed up as a fighter. A pugilistic down and outer. I used to make 20,000 in one night, and they pay me five dollars. I asked everyone I knew for help. What was I supposed to do, huh? Watch my baby suffer? I'm not a cherry case. I know he hates it. He doesn't have to tell me. I can see it. I saw him, it was the same thing. Oh. Sorry, I can't get you a fight, kid. Nobody wants you. He just plods around the ring. Bad feet, too slow, flat footed. He's got no left hand. Then what are the times? I'm never gonna get a chance like this again. I, I know that. <laughs> The winner and new heavyweight champion! James J. Braddock has unquestionably won this contest. When they said unanimous decision with Braddock, well, I think uh, not only my family, but I think uh, I heard it all over the block. The greatest story in pugilism. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved the guy for not only for his boxing ability, because he was a, a, a decent person. They thought that Max Bear was was going to actually kill him, you know. But he had a lot of guts. That, that's why they call him the Cinderella Man, because they didn't never dream, never dreamed that he could do what he done. <laughs> he jumped over the ropes. He lifted me up. Hey, Jim, with Jimmy, we did it. <laughs> I, I knew I won. Yeah, you knew we won, and I knew we won, and Ben knew we won, and everyone knew. Yeah, it didn't matter what the judges said. It was my night. It took us longer to get back to the dressing room than it did to actually win the fight. I just remember people grabbing me and saying, I'm proud of you, Jim. Yeah, they said, hey, champ. Hey, champ. Champion of the world. <laughs> Champion of the world. Cinderella Man, now a major motion picture.
James J. Braddock wore his heavyweight crown for two years. On June 22nd, 1937, he lost the title to Joe Lewis. Braddock retired from the ring seven months later. Being that he came from Jersey, we all felt proud of him. That's when I, I first got interest in boxing when I was really young because Jimmy Braddock won the heavyweight title. It was like a fairy tale, I suppose, especially all us fighters that were in the amateurs and the preliminaries. We had our dreams also, and we uh, equated that with the James J. Braddock. This is it. This is what we're supposed to do. This is what we're supposed to be. Good, 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 good. Joe Gould never managed another champion. He died in 1950. He was 53 years old. Max Baer continued fighting until 1941. He never regained the heavyweight crown, but he did become a minor Hollywood star. And I think it's all about Jimmy. He talked about uh, uh, his family. And he was proud of his family. And he stayed with calling himself a boxer. That's what he knew. James J. Braddock never earned great riches, but his family never went hungry again. In 1974, at the age of 69, Braddock died at home in his sleep. May lived another 15 years. She never remarried. Their only surviving child, Howard, still lives in New Jersey. I met Braddock at the end of his career, and he taught me something which I carried on to today. He said to me, Scope, he says, see that you're boxing, remember one thing, keep your left hand high and your keister off the canvas. I wish you knew him because I, I know you would have liked him the same way I like him. He was a better human being than the, than, than the fighter. He was a great human being. I loved him. In 1935, shortly after he won the title, Braddock repaid every penny of the relief money he'd received during the Depression with interest. The reason? It's the only fair thing to do he said. 